Hi everyone. The SMO results were just released today, or at least uh, at the time of recording, the SMO results were just released. Congratulations to everyone who placed in the top 30. Uh, whether you are my student or just a viewer of this, this channel, I hope that I've helped out in some small way as well. But a very important question to ask is just, um, well, now what? So we know that the SMO is a once a year competition, right? And what do I do for a whole year? Now, in general, one thing that we have to say is that Olympiads are not everything in math. So learn more math is one option. And whether that be learning more math that is Olympiad based, whether that be learning some math that is just um, a topic you're interested in. Even if you want to try to understand the proof of, let's say, Pythagoras theorem, right? It, it's just something you're curious about. Or if you want to understand the progress that's been made for Goldbach's conjecture, just learn more math. Something else that you can do is just to also look at other competitions, right? So there are lots of other contests and I think the most important one that uh, many of you will be looking to next would be the AMCs. The Australian AMCs are very soon, the American AMCs are maybe going to be a little bit later. Those will probably be the next ones you want to try. Also just revisit old stuff. So revisit your old contest, which means that even the SMO that you've just done, a couple of months from now, don't feel bad to just look back again and say, was I being very silly? Or is that really going to be that hard and this is all that I could do? Now this is just general comments. I want to go a bit more specifically into a few different scenarios that apply to many of you. Now, the first scenario is that um, these are all new to you. You have not actually done much of these Olympiads at all. What do I do now? Now, if this is all new to you, the first thing that you have to realize is that uh, you should just um, have fun. You shouldn't worry too much about a specific award right now because we are almost a year away from the next SMO and we are also some months away from a lot of other competitions. So have fun, right? Learn to appreciate why this is different from school math. And as I've mentioned in some earlier videos, don't expect perfection. So many of you have asked me for, let's say, you know, a checklist of topics, right? So what is the list of topics that's covered in junior, senior and open? That's quite impossible because that's not how Olympiads are supposed to work. Olympiads are meant to be full of surprises. And if you can get 50%, that's amazing most of the time. So you have to learn to do it with the expectation of failing half the time, more than half the time, and that doesn't mean that you are doing badly. Now, at the same time, um, even though we say don't expect perfection, uh, make sure that you also um, ensure that your foundations are strong. Now this is a very general video, so it depends on what level you're at as to what's a foundation. For example, if you're taking the SMO Junior, you have to make sure that you know how to solve quadratic equations. You have to make sure that you know how to, let's say, count the number of ways to arrange things in a row. You have to make sure that you know how to solve simultaneous equations. Now these are technically school topics um, or at least close to school topics but you need to make sure you know them very well because otherwise when you're solving Olympiad questions you're not getting stuck at the Olympiad part. You're really just getting stuck on the so-called school math part which isn't the fun part yet. That's scenario number one. You're just getting started. Scenario number two is that many of you say, I keep on getting the same result again. Now, if you're watching this video now, maybe you don't know yet. 
because uh, the gold, silver, bronze, and honorable mention hasn't been released yet. It will be released at some point soon, I believe. Your, your school teachers will give you the certificates. But some of you say that I keep on getting the same result. Now, first of all, you have to ask yourself, are you okay with this? Now, that's an important question because it takes a lot of effort to improve. And it's okay to not really want to improve in everything. Now, for example, uh, I spent a lot of time on math Olympiads. So when I took a physics Olympiad, I was okay if I didn't do that well, right? It's fine because physics Olympiads were not my main focus. As long as I got something, whether it was a bronze or silver, I was quite happy with it. So are you okay with this? If you're okay with this, do nothing is okay or do the same thing as you've always done. But the other thing is also targeted practice. Now, when I say targeted practice, you keep getting the same award or the same position. It means that, for example, maybe in round one, you always can solve about 15 questions. If you keep on doing practice papers and solving 15 questions, how do you expect to get more than 15 questions? You need to focus on the 10 hardest questions. So focus on what you find difficult is the next tip. If let's say that you take the round two and every time you cannot solve the geometry question, even if it's the easiest one, then focus on easy geometry questions because that's exactly what is preventing you from doing better. In other words, don't just spend 20 hours a week just doing Olympiad problems and every paper you get 15 out of 25 questions and then you ask why you're not improving. The other important thing about this is also read solutions. Now, solutions, um, I guess from me, would be to watch solutions. If it's the SMO book or if it's elsewhere, um, read them. Because if you only solve questions that you know how to solve and you never check the solutions for those that you don't know how to solve, you're basically going to only know this certain percentage every time. And what this means is that if you can't understand it, dig into whatever is new. If let's say that you see a solution that says by Euler's theorem, and you say, I do not know what's Euler's theorem, search it out. Because it means that once you've searched it out, there's one more problem that you know how to solve than before. This is scenario number two. The third scenario is that some of you are a bit disappointed, right? And you feel that I did so much worse, right? I thought that I'll get a gold, I only got a silver. I thought that I would get a bronze, I didn't win anything. I thought I will place in the top 10, I didn't even manage to get into the top 30, right? So there are different types of did worse than expected. Now, the first thing is just um, take a break. It's okay. Now, I did that uh, sometimes. And why did I do that? Uh, my experience when I took the SMOs was that, and you can check this out, right? This is historically uh, my results. For junior, uh, so I started in 2009 and I got third place. And then when I got uh, the second year in junior, I got first place. So this is great, right? Um, congratulations to me. Now, when I went to senior, I got second for the first year. And then the second time after that, when I took it, I got first. So congratulations to me again. Now, what would come next in this pattern? Well, um, when I took open the first year, not the first year, I took it quite a number of times, but when I took it in my um, JC1 slash year five, I got 11th place. Now this does not follow a pattern, does it, right? 3, 1, 2, 1, 11 is not a very common pattern. I was a bit disappointed because that doesn't seem to be following a trend. But this brings me to the next point, right? It happens. So take a break. I did take a break from doing this and uh, the next year things went back to a bit more of my normal self, right? I came in second that year. I was happy with that again. But the second thing is that if we look at stuff like this, right? Understand that SMO has high variance, especially round, round two. 
it has high variance, meaning that one question makes a huge difference. You have a sample size of five questions in round two. If you make one question worth of careless mistakes, which means that you misread the question, you may drop by 10 positions or 20 positions just by one question wrong in round two. And so don't assume that this is a reflection of how good you are. It's a very high variance kind of problem set when there's only five problems and usually one is very easy, one's very hard. It's just really three questions in the middle. Now the third one is to ask yourself honestly, do I deserve that? So did I deserve to do worse? Now there's a huge gap, let's say between junior to senior. When it comes to round one, you have got a lot of trigonometry, logarithms, polynomial stuff. If you just went on your knowledge from SMO junior, you will do much worse. When you look at round two, junior round two versus senior round two, there is a huge gap in difficulty. Did you deserve to get that drop off? Now, if really sometimes you realize that I didn't actually improve that much. So I didn't improve that much. How could I expect to have gotten better or the same on a harder contest? So if it's deserved, then as I mentioned earlier, do practice, target your weak points. Right? Maybe that's really what is an appropriate result for me, but next year I can still do better. Now, the last group is that some of you did much better than you expected, right? There are some of you who are really surprised and wow, I managed to place in the top 30. Or I managed to get a goal for the first time or I got a bronze even though I only started doing this for three months. Well, first thing is congrats. Good job, right? Congratulate yourself. Now, it's important to take the wins that you can take because the SMO is just really hard. And a lot of people are participating. So give yourself a pat on the back. But also the same question applies. Ask yourself, was it deserved? Did you just get quote unquote lucky? Were you just fortunate because you had one question that you had seen before from your teacher, from me, from your school, from a textbook, and you got 10 extra marks that vaulted you up all the way to the top? It's important to understand this because if let's say that you just have a false reflection that oh this is now my new standard i've gotten so much better you may end up being disappointed next year last thing is that keep improving now you, as you go along through the smo fewer and fewer people are going to be seriously participating Olympias. This is the truth because we have got lots of schoolwork, we have got CCAs, we have got O levels and A levels and you know many other projects and maybe you do physics Olympias, chemistry Olympias, astronomy Olympias, bio Olympias, um, NOI. There are so many different things you may be doing and so if let's say you did better maybe this is the thing you should focus on. Maybe you should really try to put your effort here because there is really a lot to do and there's only so much that you can focus on so maybe this is a good sign that the effort you have put in is going to be worthwhile and you can continue working on math olympiads all right so this is just a little bit of general advice um, we're not doing any math today math will come back to the channel pretty soon but if you have any other comments on the smo results please feel free to leave them in the comments below and once again Congratulations to all of you who did well.